Okay, in this video, I'm going to tell you all about the group rotation template and how to use it. The group rotation template can be found in the Pro Tools category. So you click on Pro Tools as a category, and there are two templates currently in there. And on my system, it's the second one down in the list. It's called Group Rotation Template. To use this template, I need to select a symbol list. And seeing as everybody has the weekly options list because it's shipped with the program, I'm going to use that in this example. But you can use any list that you like. So you select your list, you update your data if needed. I have my data updated through to August the 12th, 2014 for all 310 symbols. And then the first page of the template gives you an option of choosing your percent change period and a rank averaging period. And the percent change period is what is used to do the ranking, which you'll see in a second. If I wanted to change that from a 22 day percent change period, then I could hit change settings and it gives me the option here of changing the, the percent change period or the rank averaging or both. I click OK. When, I'm, when I've done that, I can just press run. The template will go ahead and calculate the data for this symbol list. And when it's finished, it will present a report. It will, it will show you actually the dashboard worksheet of the resulting report. And the dashboard worksheet is really a summary of the other worksheets that you see at the bottom of this workbook. So to explain a bit more about the workbook and how it's built, I'm going to go to the very first worksheet in the workbook. It's actually the end one, but it's the first one that's, that's built by EdgeRater. And it's the rank values. So the rank values contains a column for every day that you have data, for which you have data. And then by the symbol, on the row for the symbol, it puts in the, the actual value for the, that's going to be used for the ranking. And because we're using a function, which we said at the beginning, um, we're using a percent change to do the ranking. We're using a 22 day percent change. The values that appear in the rank value sheet are actually 22 day percent changes for each of those stocks for each of these days. Now, when you're on this particular worksheet, as actually all of the other worksheets, you can double click on any one of these and it will bring up a chart showing you where the symbol is. So I clicked on AGQ and uh, on 9-6-2012 it, it had a 35.79% gain over 22 days. So if we go back to 9-6-2012 which was way back over here. Okay so we're, we're now looking at this period of time and there was a 22% gain that's why Sorry, it had a 35% gain. That's why it has appeared with a 35.79 in that particular cell. Now, when you're in the worksheet, you can click on any of the, the, the date headers and it will sort them by ranking value. So essentially, it's telling you, if you do this, which of the stocks have the highest 22-day percentage gain. Uh, and you can do this for any of the days. So if we scroll all the way to the front of the worksheet and we find the latest date uh, that we have data for, which is August 12th, 2014, I can see that LinkedIn is actually uh, has a 36.28 percent. And if I bring up the chart, 22-day uh, 22-day uh, gain of 36.28 percent. So if we were to measure the 22 days back from today back to here, we'd find that that was a 22 percent, uh, sorry, a 36.28 percent gain. Now, from here you can see how the other worksheets are built, because what I did by clicking on the date header was to order these in terms of highest to lowest percentage gain. Essentially what I've done here is create a ranking. The sheet next to rank values, called rank of values, has actually done that ranking for me and given me a one value for the highest rank and and then the rank goes all the way down to whatever the uh, however many symbols you have in this case I have 310 so the worst percentage gain gainer over 22 days has got this 
the lowest, I should say, it's actually the highest number rank, but the higher number rank means a lower, um, a lower ranking. So if I scroll down, go back to the rank values worksheet and go all the way to the bottom, and I can see Dendrion is there with a negative 38.6% gain over the last 22 days. I mean, we can see what happened. Most of that was because of uh, Tuesday when there was a big gain, but if you go back to 22 days ago, that would have been a uh, 36%, 38% loss in, uh, in that stock. All right, so now that we've ranked them, we've got our rank of values sheet over here. And we can obviously do the same thing by clicking on headers. We can go back to the various different days and see which stocks were the highest ranked for, for those days. But I'm going to stick it on eight on the, the last bar of data that we have. So I'm looking at 8 to 12, 2014. And so I can look through this column and see all stocks from the from the, the best rank to the worst rank just by looking down. Now as rank changes every day, sometimes the changes are erratic. And so getting a single value for ranking isn't necessarily the, the best thing to have. So what we do in this sh in this template is give you the option of specifying an average period an averaging period for the rank. So for instance with intercept pharmaceuticals which t today or the last bar of data we have was ranked number four. The previous day it was ranked 39, the day before that it was ranked 58, then 95, then 218. So if I say that my rank averaging period is five, as I have said at the beginning of this, which you, you can change, then I'm gonna take all five previous rank values and average them to produce a final rank. So if I go to the final rank sheet, remember we were looking at ICPT, Intercept Pharmaceuticals, and I sort this by ranking. Now ICPT isn't in the top 10 because its average rank is actually different. So if I do my control F to find ICPT, we'll see it's actually down here around number 77 for the day, just because um, it it its average wasn't as good as the other averages. If you didn't want to use averaging for ranking, then you can set the value when you before you run the template for rank averaging to be uh, one, which means that uh, it's just gonna use the current bar and actually do no averaging. So now you end up with a final rank and then the dashboard tries to roll all of that information up and, and give you uh, some insight into symbols that are rotating within that group or within that symbol list. So the first thing you'll see here is that uh, the top 10 ranked symbols are pulled out into this box up here and that should correspond to the final rank sheet numbers 1 through 10. So X, United States Steel Corp, down to VXX, the iPath short-term futures, fix short-term futures. So as you see, it's X down through VXX. It does the same for the bottom 10 ranked symbols as well. So that would be final rank if we if we just bought the uh, the bottom 10 to the, to the top of this list. Um, it would end up being DHI up to NUS, NUS being the worst ranked stock. So NUS is the worst ranked stock um, and it's actually from BBRY 301 to 310, we'll give, it, we'll give us 10. Just confirm that, 301 was, was research in, in motion. And then if we move over on, to the right on the report, there is another box which is telling us the biggest change in rank. Uh, so there's biggest change to the upside and then biggest change to the downside. So this takes the previous rank, prior day's rank, takes today's rank and calculates the difference. And then the stocks that have the highest difference are brought to the top of this list. So in this case, dry ships comes up as being the, the biggest rank change. And when you're on the dashboard sheet, you can double click on the symbol and that will bring up the chart for whatever symbol you clicked on. So here you can see the dry ships, even though it isn't a high, a highly ranked stock, 
we can see what the rank is. The rank is actually 202. The change in rank was 47, so it's the biggest change in rank. So using this sort of idea, it's possible to see stocks that are uh, changing rapidly and potentially starting a move in one direction or another. And we can scroll through that list too. The third group and the final group in this dashboard sheet is trying to pick out stocks that have acceleration. So it takes, essentially it builds off of the previous group. So it takes the rank and the previous rank to calculate the difference, which is exactly what the previous uh, group did when we were looking at rank change. But then it says that the previous difference so for the for the for the prior day the previous difference was 21 and then it calculates essentially the difference between today's difference and the previous difference to try and give you some idea for acceleration so if we look at some of these dry ships again has come to the top of this list but it's not always the case that they're in the same order so chevron wasn't in the list of biggest rank changes to the upside but it is in this list of fastest acceleration and if i double click on chevron we can see that um, that we can see the chart for Chevron. Okay, so it gives you some insight there. And that is really uh, all you need to know about the group rotation report. Now, obviously, you can run this on any group, any symbol list. The group, in fact, is the, the list of symbols that you've selected on the left hand side. Um, if you had a list of industry groups or a list of ETFs that represent industry groups or ETFs that represent sectors, then you could get an idea of sector rotation as well. Once you've run this using the 22-day uh, percentage, 22-day uh, change to find the biggest percentage change over 22 days, you can then, you could change those settings and you could say go for a longer term uh, strength, relative strength or longer term ranking and say maybe we're going to use um, 100 days. And we're still going to average those results over five bars. So I change that. You see the settings in the worksheet have changed to be 105. And now if I run the report, instead of it looking at the shorter term it, for ranking, it's going to be looking at a longer term. Different groups of stocks now come to the top of this list. And we'll have different looks when we bring up a chart to view them. And you can change the layout, obviously, of the chart to be anything you like. Or you could just keep it simple with one of the basic layouts. Price only. I have one for price only. And I can just scroll through this list of stocks and just get an idea for what, is in, what has been, what is the top ranked stock for a, tw for a 100 day percentage change. So Petrobas comes to the top. So even though over the last 22 days, you see it's actually negative in terms of percentage. If you look over 100 days, which is from back here somewhere, it's actually um, a percentage gainer and actually is the biggest percentage gainer out of all the stocks in this list. So if you're looking for a longer term strength, you can look at this. If you're looking for longer term weakness, you can go down to the lower box down here. The worst performer over 100 days is Molycore. And uh, Zinger is pretty bad too. So all of these will be uh, long-term poor performers. So Intercept Pharmaceuticals over 100 bars, uh, that would put it back up here somewhere. So, and if you worked out the percentage for uh, decrease for that, then it puts it among uh, the worst out of all of the stocks in this list. So there we are, that's how to use the group rotation report. Thanks a lot.